Dinner was delicious, Sonny. Still, after everything that I've essentially put you through emotionally, let alone today, just making you wait for answers, it's, it's mind-blowing. You're still willing to cook dinner, you're still willing to tell me you love me. Dinner was amazing. You did very well. <laughs> yes. Yes, I suppose I can say that you are the better chef between the two of us. At least when it comes to this dish. <laughs> I suppose you still want answers. You still want the truth, don't you? <laughs> no. It's not like complimenting you on dinner in my head was going to make you forget about it. Trust me. I know you well enough. Once you have something in your mind, it's set and you'll never forget it until it's dealt with or spoken about, or both. But, just, when I tell you, promise me that you won't look at me as any different from your, yeah, your loving partner. Yes, and the love of your life. Well, uh, either way, I still hope that you'd at least forgive me for not, I guess, consulting you. I'm getting ahead here, though. Uh, where do I start? I suppose we can start with the news clipping. Uh, so, it says July 4th right, of this year. Mm -hmm. Car crash, death. Yes. You're catching on very well. See, that news clipping is, was, I guess, you, in a sense. <laughs> By the look of confusion on your face, I can guess that that means you don't quite understand what I'm getting at. I guess I should try and start from the beginning. of light that you see every once in a while, the one that we've been making excuses, well, I've been making excuses of it being a flashlight, or a camera flash, or whatever. That's none of what I said. In fact, it's a theme of headlights. See? Last year, 4th of July, we were at a party with our family friends, you know, um, and we were doing what anybody else would on such a huge celebration. We set off some fireworks, um, played games, had a barbecue, whole nine yards, including the beer actually pretty gross and, you know, I'm more of a wine person anyway, but <laughs> I know. No, I, I do that when I'm nervous. You know this. Anyway, we got a little tipsy, but 
Um, no, wait. The wine is getting to my head. Give me a second. Okay, so... We were all together. Drinking, eating, having fun as we would at any other 4th of July celebration. And... All of us were just a little tipsy. We did a game of nose goes almost, which is such an old and stupid thing that we could have done. But we did. We weren't thinking clearly. And well, anyway, neither of us were driving, but you were shotgun. I was right behind you. And our two pairs of friends, so, yeah, the two sets of couples. One of them was driving and everyone else was in the back. I know, it's a long setup. It's just how I tell stories, I guess. Well, we cleaned up. We tried to sober up a little bit, but... I think we had some issues, but our drivers swore they were fine. However, that wasn't the case, and that's when you saw the beaming headlights of another car, and that searing hot pain you mentioned earlier. That was, that was the car crash mentioned in the newspaper. Do you see where I'm getting at this yet? <laughs> kind of. Okay. Uh, I didn't really want to get all through this, but if I have to, I will. So, hospital. A few months later. I'm okay. Everyone else is okay, but you, you were still in a coma. Yes, believe it or not, you were in a coma, and it was really bad too. No, they didn't pronounce you dead or a vegetable. No, they... They were just keeping you on life support and kept calling you as a patient with a coma because you still had a chance to come out of it. But as each day grew by, it was just it was starting to get very difficult. I couldn't stand the thought of losing you and I just I started to think a lot. There's this, well, you've heard about the, I think you have, I, I don't know, but there was an announcement a few months back before the accident where some scientists and one of the big media companies started to create a sort of, what did they call it? I am. That's it. Artificial intelligence memory. By the look in your eyes now, it looks like you understand where I'm going. Yeah. So, what these guys do is they take a scan of your brain. Because of how technology has gotten so much more advanced, they were able to compile all of your memories into kind of a file, I guess. And they imported you into a chip. And the chip went into... Yeah. Yeah, you're... You're technically... I wouldn't exactly.
exactly call you a robot. More like, um, that game that Detroit become, yeah. You're more like an android, I guess. <laughs> okay, hey, I can understand that you're upset and confused. Breathe with me, hon. Please, stay with me here. You have to know why I did it. I... I couldn't bear the thought of living without you. And as days moved into weeks, which moved into months, I was worried that I would never ever get to see you again. And when the doctor said that it was possible that you might never be the same again, that you possibly could turn into a vegetable, I, I just couldn't let that happen to you. So I got into contact with one of the doctors at the science lab where they create the... Yeah, it was the one who comes and visits you when I told you you were sick. He was more checking your memory and your all of that. Hmm? Yes, I did it because I couldn't lose you. I could lose you to such a stupid night. And I could not just let you sit and potentially rot away in a hospital room. I feel awful that I did it behind your back, essentially. But there was no way of communicating with you when you were in such a deep coma. Yes. Yes, I understand that. It's no crazy. That's actually one of the reasons why I had us block all the mirrors. Their ability to create proper skins and textures for you isn't quite ready yet or perfect. They're almost there though and they say that they should be ready in the next day or two. Yeah, until then you kind of would actually look like a little more like a robot than a human. Yes, you still think and you still act all because of that memory, the AIM. It's incredible. I know it wasn't right of me. I should have waited. I should have waited to see if you were going to get better. But my brain was just so overwhelmed with worry and fear and all of these other things. I just... I took that step without talking to you and I'm sorry. But it's because I love you much. And yes, I was scared to be alone, to have to deal with that. But now that you know, how do you feel? Do you want to see yourself? Are you sure? The one of the doctors told me that that could be very bad for your... Alright. Come with me over here. This tall mirror I used for our last date that we had on the 4th of July. I promise you, it's going to be a little shocking, but you're still you. 
in a strange sense. In an artificial body, yes. All right, here goes nothing. It's you, tall, chrome, silver, and blue. I guess you could say you look kind of crazy and cool at the same time, but well, nothing. What do I see? Well, Despite the fact that you have a very different physical appearance from, from how you looked beforehand, I still see you, the loving person I fell in love with, the one that I was ready to spend the rest of my life with, I still am, but I understand if things change. Like I said, the doctors are working on a new type of android where their limbs are better, their memory is better, um, their skin is better, to where if, if you allowed me to move your AIM from this form to the new one, he would completely you in a sense you wouldn't even know or even be able to tell that you got in any sort of accident it would be insane it would be a miracle you basically dodged death I suppose yeah what I used to say that while life is only temporary, that's what makes life so beautiful. Having immortality drains the beauty of... I, I know what I said, but still, this is you were talking about. I, at the time, I couldn't bear to lose you, and I still can't bear to lose you now. And that you maybe want to think about this. And that it's ultimately you at the end of the day. Whether it's your physical body or your AIM. What happened to your physical body? Uh, well, afterwards, um, after the transfer, you went, actually, you went brain dead. So they called that and put you into this body. I know, it's crazy for even me to talk about. I barely understand it. But, you know I love you. <laughs> yes, more than anything. And, well, it's hard for me to say this, I agree, it's, it wasn't fair of me to make this decision without you. Like I said, I should have waited, but I, I couldn't. That's why, with this one, I'm giving you the decision. Free will. The chance to choose. Whether you want to get transferred into the new android, the new android body at least, or basically shut you off. I hate how that sounds, but the 
the alternative is really to just to shut you off permanently. I know that some people would want that because to them, while the afterlife is scary, death is still a necessary part of life and to experience it. But with this new android, it could also enhance life, help you live longer and fulfill more of your dreams. And I know, I'm not really helping. Look, I'm going to give you completely free will here. If you need a day, a week, a month, or more, think this through, and I'll let you think it through on your own. Until then, we can remove the curtains over the mirrors. We can even go out if you want, out of this house, and you can see everything. See what life is like. And if, if you choose one way or the other, to either shut off or to transfer. Well, I will support you either way. I love you. And while I, it hurts for me to think of life without you, I want you to be happy. Even if that means ending your cycle right here. I know you do. I love you too. So much. Alright. I'm sorry. I didn't really intend to cry so much. Well, on to, I guess, less heavy things. I did bring cake home from work. So delicious. And, well, if you'd like, just watch a movie and eat cake together if you'd like. Yeah. <laughs> Be a good distraction. Okay. I'll get the cake out of the fridge and you pick out what you want to watch. And, sweetheart, thank you for n not being completely mad at me. You understand why I did it, and you still love me. I know. Take all the time you need to think about this, and when you're ready to tell me, just take me aside and I'll be ready for whatever you have to say. <laughs> 